Hi again, everyone. So yeah, today's video is going to be basically on my newly rebuilt and uh, cleaned up uh, three-channel uh, Series 2 Bose equalizer that I've uh, just finished getting most of the bugs out. But as you can hear, there's one really important bug that hasn't been taken out yet. That's the um, 60 hertz hum that you can hear behind me. It's very faint, but it's loud enough when you're close to the speakers you can hear it. So, yeah, that's one definite thing I got to fix, but so let me let me begin with um the premise for the box was, you know, you guys saw in the other videos where I had uh two separate boxes and it was a real pain in the butt, you know, cabling wise and everything else. So about 2 weeks ago I decided to uh build a pizza box and let's see how it looks inside. So as you can see, inside of here is pretty familiar, um, but at the same time, a lot better looking, a lot more cleaned up. So what I've basically done is I took the dog's breakfast equalizer, cleaned it up, you know, cleaned up all the capacitor wiring on all that cleaned up uh, how the capacitor banks were, were, were set up for the 20 volts, 18 volts, and 16 volts. And then I basically, as you can see in the picture here, I cut the AC cord out completely, took out the crappy transformer, and just basically tapped off those three power, three, um, capac three big capacitors there for the 20, 18, and 16 volts for the, the second Bose EQ. Now, if you look a little close, you can see what I've done here is this was a, a total rebuild. Secondly, I wanted to experiment with uh, cheaper uh, surface mount uh, devices. So what I did was I took some copper tape strips and very painstakingly clipped off all the old through hole resistors. And without a microscope, and I ain't getting any younger for this stuff soldered 0603 size resistors onto the onto those areas and the um, uh, power supply or the power supply capacitors for the transistors which are those six yellow chiclets up top there same thing took copper tape strips put them down cut the old uh, parts out left the leads uh, available and yeah, it was, you know, other than, oh, and you can also see that the transistors have disappeared on both builds. Where did they go? Well, I mounted them underneath because I needed the space for those big capacitors to mount. So the transistors and their uh, bypass capacitors are all mounted underneath, all those cute little red Wema caps that I like using. And as you can see, there's only two cables going into this box instead of uh, two going in and four co and two coming out. Now what you can see I've done here is the red heat shrink, that's your right channel. I use that for the plus pin of the XLR. The yellow wire there, that's actually the, the ground connection. And the white wire with green, which is the original Bose factory wires, that's the left channel which I use for the negative pin. You know, or the, you know, one is the inverting pin which is the white cable, white wire. The non-inverting pin which is the green cable with the, red heat, with the red heat shrink. And again, I repeated the same process up for the, the, the input uh, cables here. You can see the same thing. I got pin two which is the, the left channel that's my uh, uh, non-inverting input and then the inverting input is the blue wire from the factory with the red heat shrink again for the uh, plus pin or the, the non-inverting pin also you'll see there's a Bourne's uh, potentiometer and unfortunately it's a passive connection for the time being um, it's basically nothing but an inline a variable inline attenuator um, 
originally my plan was, and it's probably in a previous picture posted online somewhere, was I was going to put a volume control, an active volume control for that, to A, act as a buffer because I am getting some noise or banging noises when I switch between inputs or sometimes when tracks will change on my center channel. And, you know, so that's another little bug that I got to fix up. You know, you can see my un my balanced to unbalanced to balanced boards hit back nice and neatly uh, mirror imaged like that. Um, panel mounted, um, a whole bunch of Nutric uh, XLR connections. You can see my AudioQuest cables there. And what happened here? Okay, so, oh, air conditioner just came on, great. Um, I had some leftover Red River cable that was RCA terminated, no use for it anymore. And because I uh, had the extra Nutric uh, connectors, male and female, you know, from tearing down the, the original build of this, I decided, well, it's got three wires inside. It's got a yellow wire, a blue wire, and, and a ground. So there we go. Worked perfectly. And as you can see from the, the copper tape, this copper tape, just like on the original Bose boxes, is necessary because, man, these circuits are susceptible to noise. And there's my little Mac attack there, my little 50 watt uh, transistorized uh, monster. Not good for bass, as I found out early last, you know, earlier this year. But for mids and highs, it's so sweet. And again, it's connected to the center channel right there. And so yeah, that that copper tape is absolutely necessary, and I think I can do a quick little demo of it. So you can clearly hear the hum. Now this is with the the box powered off. Both EQs are powered off right now. The Macintosh amp is on. The PS Audio amps and preamps are on. Sony receiver is on. You can clearly hear the hum now. Again, remember, I'm doing everything balanced. So technically, we shouldn't hear anything. But that's another story. So now I slide on the, the, the copper tape cover. And you can see all the points of contact there. And there's no screws. Now, fits perfectly, the hum is gone, looks nice. Now, this is what I've got to fix. Power it on, and there you go. That's not good. Now, because I'm in close proximity to the speakers, yes, you can really hear it. Now. If I go back to my listening area, you'll still hear the hum, especially on very quiet passages, which is really, really annoying. But when you're listening to normal music, it sounds great, you know. But again, this is another bug that I've got to fix. i um, got to f find myself a decent little oscilloscope and uh, start tracing it out, um, clipping ground connections where possible and hopefully that fixes it. I know I had this issue before on the dog's breakfast and it was the same thing. It was moving some ground uh, things around and um, it, it worked out. So, you know, so that's almost it. Now I'd like to give a big shout out to Bob Douglas on the Facebook uh, Bose pages because uh, he hooked me up with some black with um, white silkscreen uh, panels that he had for some rebuilds that he was doing and they look really really cool now unfortunately i got the funky uh multi uh different uh knobs going on here but that's okay so there's the front panel there um, i tried to keep everything as clean as possible you know and hey the leds match the amps leds even even in intensity i made sure the resistor value was just right and you can see where i bypass i, I removed the tape tape normal monitor uh, switch and installed the volume control in there 
What's going to happen on this side is the tape normal monitor switch, which does absolutely nothing, that it's actually going to be used for the D DC power, so it'll be like a remote um, uh, on and off power switch. And I checked the rating on the switch already, and it can safely do um, DC power through it. I could probably do AC through it too, but um, they're not the, the cleanest, you know, not the greatest switches, and they are 50 years old, so you never know. So yeah, there's my rebuilt Bo CQ, and uh, it looks a lot better than what I showed you guys before. And yeah, yeah. Again, leave your comments, questions below. And as you can see, this thing's a total homebrew uh, production here. Out back, if I don't know if we can get to it. So yeah, you can see my rat's nest uh, out back there, you know. And uh, yeah. And again, you can see my uh, balance to single-ended adapter there. And no, this is not creating the hum that you're hearing. You know, I already checked that out. Again, folks, thank you for watching. Um, leave your comments below, criticisms, whatever you feel. And thanks again. Bye.